Thank you, Mr. Price. Um, members, so I know that's been a lengthy discussion, um, and, and I think that's good. I think the debate and the conversation and the ongoing discussions is great. Um, but I've been serving on this council now for seven years, and it also feels like we've been having seven years worth of discussions and debates about how to deal with this homeless crisis. And Mr. Bonin, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the fact that our, the city attorney was able to turn this ordinance around so quickly um, is kind of shocking. Um, because I've been waiting for the last seven years um, to get us moving in a direction where we can stop uh, for lack of a better word, the bleeding of people who are continuing to become homeless and living on our streets, and that has not happened. And I also think we need to have an honest conversation about enforcement. I know it's a scary word. I know it's a controversial word. But Ms. Rodriguez, you and I know what that looks like in our neighborhoods because we grew up there. And we chose to raise our families there. And we chose... Um, to represent those neighborhoods. In the San Fernando Valley, we often don't get credit for the fact that we've been sheltering, providing services to the neediest among us for decades. For decades, Ms. Rodriguez. In fact, when Measure HHH was passed, if it wasn't for me advocating that we figure out how we equitably build housing across this city, guess where, most of this, guess where most of the permanent supportive housing would have been built in the San Fernando Valley, in our districts? Because that's just the way we do things here. That's what we do to communities of color. That's how we respect communities of color. We put things that nobody else wants in communities like ours. That's why we have the Valley Generating Station, that's why we have the dumps in our district. That's why we have dozens of landfills that are no longer operating, but they were in our districts. And the majority of services and affordable housing that nobody else wants to build. And so members, we keep talking about the status quo, but that's exactly what we do every time we don't act. We choose to continue our failed policies and our legal settlements that get us absolutely nowhere. And what does that mean? That means we are choosing to let black and brown homeless people live and die in our streets every single day. And we are also choosing to let black and brown neighborhoods, which have more freeways than most, continue to be overwhelmed with encampments. That's what we say every single time we don't act. And we're doing this while most entitled communities and more affluent populations advocate out of guilt because they have the luxury to ask for more time. And how do we allow that? When, it, when I look out and I see our brothers and sisters being homeless, and it's often our neighborhoods that are overwhelmed and their families have to witness things that they shouldn't. Our children. Ms. Rodriguez, we represent immigrant communities in the San Fernando Valley. People who have come here with absolutely nothing. And they've built something. Like my father, the dishwasher, for 30 years bought a house was part of the American dream, but yet he can, yet it's not good enough because our neighbors have to deal with an overburden of things that other neighborhoods don't have to see every single day. And that's the message we send. And we get vilified. We get vilified for standing up for our neighborhoods, for saying we've built the housing we're trying to make sure people have access to a bed, and we're trying to clear the bride away. Because we deserve clean streets just like the West Side does. We deserve that. Every neighborhood should. And we get vilified for that. Members, I think the conversation is going to get tougher. 
I think people are fed up, no matter how you look at this. People are done with seeing people living on our streets and seeing homeless folks not getting the services that they deserve. Black and brown people have been victims of a failed mental health system and a failed healthcare system that has not produced anything for us. And the result is our people are dying on the streets. So members, Mr. Bonnet, I hear what you're saying about sending this to committee. And I would, I would agree with the exception is that I think we need to have this conversation in public and the entire council needs to engage and be honest about what we're going to do about the enforcement piece. I keep hearing members are going to meet their, 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 uh, their housing needs, their building as fast as they can, and they're going to be at capacity. And God forbid that their homeless population move into my district. I'll tell you what, build more. Build more. That's what you can do. Don't stop building. Continue to build so that your homeless population doesn't have to move into my district. Continue to build. That's the right thing to do. That's the human thing to do. And that's what we should all be doing. We shouldn't stop building. We should continue to build to make sure our homeless population does move, doesn't move from community to community, from district to district. That's what we all should be doing. So Mr. Bonin, I hear what you're saying, but I'm gonna continue this item to November 24th, 4th in council so that we can continue to dive in and continue to come up with real solutions and not just kick this item down the road because it's convenient, because it's an election year, whatever the case might be. I want us to have a deep and honest discussion among ourselves about what we're gonna do with this enforcement piece as we move forward with Judge Carter's, um, um, with the Judge Carter lawsuit. So without objection, I want this uh, item no, back no, in President, committee. You mentioned November 21st, just to clarify. To November 24th. 24th, okay. November 24th, we're gonna continue this item. Without objection, that will be the order. Thank you very much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Some of us are on the queue and some of us may have an objection. You, are you objecting for it to come back to, to council on November 24th? I, I would like to say so. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I, I appreciate your comments uh, and the sentiment and the frustration. It's one we all share. Um, I have an enormous population of unhoused people in my district. Uh, Venice has one of the largest concentrations of homelessness in the city and some of the largest homeless encampments. And I think it would do all of us well. I, I would be more than happy to come to your district uh, if we all went to each other's districts and, and, and saw the commonality of what we are dealing with. People are done. People across the spectrum are absolutely done. Uh, and the only thing that we can do to make them more angry is to do the wrong thing, which is why I'm glad we are, are continuing this matter today because we were rushed, I think, into the wrong situation. We have all done a lot in our districts in building housing and shelter and safe parking, but we still have not done what we need to do to get to where we can do the type of enforcement that has been envisioned uh, in, 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 in what was originally before us today and what I hope will change. Um, we will either wind up with a system where we will do um, uh, an enforcement with no alternatives, which will be litigated and make things worse in the long run, uh, or we will tell people that we are putting an enforcement law on the books and then not enforce it uh, and, and, and just make the situation worse. I agree that we should continue this. I'm relatively agnostic on whether it's committee or council, uh, but I think if we want to have a situation that results in a resolution that has progress, that houses people, uh, then that is a conversation that personally, I think it's only gonna work well under Judge Carter, uh, bringing everybody together, because I don't know that we have the ability to, to, to get all the different parties together. But if we are going to do this through council and not committee, um, uh, uh, I would recommend that, that any proposals that we are all going to make about protocols, about specifics, be put out to the public 
at least a week in advance so that public health officials, social service agencies, and stakeholders can, can, can weigh in. I think we need to give them time so that we can get significant input from them that can help us shape this in a concrete way. Thank you.